Thank you for kind introductions. So I'm Ateni Yamra from Kunasis. So we are Japanese quantum computing startups. And this session will be the first part uh, will be from me, uh, talk about the quantum computing algorithms. And the second part will uh, talk uh, from the Ogoe-san about the uh, uh, applic application in material science. Okay. okay, so finally it's my slide. So I will get started. Um, so kind of uh, in first half of the talk, I will uh, quickly introduce our company and kind of talk about uh, what we've been uh, developing uh, called uh, QSCI algorithms. Okay, so just quick introduction about our company. So we are a company founded in 2018 in Japan, Tokyo, and recently we founded our office in Copenhagen. And kind of what we are focusing on is like uh, quantum chemistry calculation using the quantum computer. And kind of we founded company with Osaka University professors, and kind of we are uh, currently with 45 members. Kind of what we are doing is not just doing the quantum computing algorithms research, but also start with the education for industry academia. So for example, the DISQ park that our community we are having, uh, it's like what we do is like gather the people interested in quantum from industry and kind of teach them what this, uh, what is quantum computer, what, what, why this device can do the first principle calculations, and then work together for, uh, using our product QD and to do in identification of use cases. And after that, uh, we are doing a verification of uh, algorithms on actual quantum devices and kind of do algorithms development with end users. So kind of in that we use our uh, open source software uh, called QD parts. And also what we are studying uh, recently is like uh, data management for computational chemistry and also the experimental chemistry. Yeah, so kind of I will uh, go to the algorithms research of um, Kinesis. So kind of I think uh, I can skip uh, most of this part. Uh, so kind of uh, in the quantum chemistry, it's the uh, kind of basic to understand the chemical reactions. And for that, we have to understand the energy of the Hamiltonians. And for that, uh, why, why this device is, is good uh, using quantum, uh, quantum computer is like there's a natural correspondence between electronic states and in molecules and quantum states in quantum computers. And however, uh, so there's an algorithm called variational quantum Magnus over. However, uh, the, there's a, it's say like there's large problems, like for example, large number of shots uh, needed for reducing sampling error. So if you see the, um, the figure in the right, right uh, top, so kind of you can see like the for, uh, if you have like 40 qubits, it will, to get the chemical accuracy, you need like one day of the samplings. And not just that, so that is just uh, one step of the calculation. So if you want to do variational tune the parameter, you have to do that one day calculation for multiple steps. So that uh, need a huge burden of op uh, optimization process and kind of there's a large, of the large uh, physical noises those there. So kind of uh, what we are saying is like uh, uh, VQE is dead, but NISC is not. So we still believe there's uh, some applications, uh, usefulness uh, in the NISC devices. So kind of that is our challenges. And kind of our proposal is um, this algorithm called quantum selected uh, configuration interaction. Okay, so kind of uh, you might know the phase estimation algorithm. So at the end, uh, what you get is the, uh, the full CI and that's um, full uh, configuration interactions. But uh, however, uh, to, be do, to be honest, doing that on NISC is tough. So kind of uh, we are not focusing on that, but rather like in conventional quantum chemistry method, there's a um, <coughs> Uh, kind of uh, method just on take uh, only part of the configurations. So there's some method like called CISD or adapted selective CIs. So, so kind of uh, we select um, just several configuration interactions. And so our proposal is use quantum computer uh, to select the important configurations. <coughs> 
Okay, so kind of how that it works is like the assume we have some like good initial state, and kind of from that we do samplings of that some uh, uh, configurations, and then uh, generate and diagonalize Hamiltonian in the state of subspace spanned by those electronic configurations. So with this. Uh, we can kind of dramatically reduce the usage of the uh, how say samplings. So kind of I think uh, just going to this uh, uh, result is, will be more easier to uh, understand. Okay, so kind of uh, assume like the, we see that like the, this yeah, the right figure uh, with the 300 iterations. So in the there's blue line that the VQE state. So kind of if we input this VQE, and kind of if you see uh, the red line. So if you take the uh, do the samplings, a lot of samplings, and take the 64 configurations at the end. So kind of you can see that uh, you can get a lot. A uh, better result than just the pure VQE. So, in other sense, uh, this the quantum selected CI method can be seen as a um, one method to do the post processing um, of the, the uh, quantum state. So, kind of uh, you can see. So, even if we using the VQE, we cannot. To get a pretty good result to the chemical accuracy, but with this QSCI method at the end, uh, we can kind of more easily achieve the chemical accuracy that is essential for understanding uh, chemical reactions. Okay, but kind of uh, you will know this. Okay, uh, kind of you said like we want to skip VQE, uh, but kind of uh, at the end our algorithms. Uh, still use VQE, so kind of I will uh, go back to that point and kind of uh, talk about the further algorithms uh, development from us. So kind of uh, just with these QSCIs, so kind of uh, we reduce the sampling error uh, by classical diagonalizations. So kind of at the end, uh, Kind of, we just we sample uh, from the quantum computer not to get the uh, chemical accuracy, but to get the good uh, kind of reasonable configuration interactions. And kind of, uh, so we don't need uh, the uh, optimization. So we just do one step uh, sampling. So we don't have to do a lot of iterations update. And kind of for just doing classical diagonalization, we can uh, uh, dramatically re reduce the noise. Okay, uh, so kind of uh, about the further development. So kind of as this, we assume like we have the good input state and we can just do from like tensor network, use classical method. But kind of in this slide, we talk about input from the VQE, but kind of can we skip this part? So that is our recent R, um, <coughs> Uh, algorithms with the uh, QNASIS and Osaka University and also with our partner GSR. So kind of uh, <coughs> how these algorithms adapt QSCI work, um, just briefly, is kind of uh, we run the QSCI several steps. So kind of assume we have um, in the first step of the QSCI, uh, we uh, kind of obtain some state, and in the next step, we add one more gate. Uh, for So this is kind of for adapt VQE, uh, the kind of algorithms, it's similar. So kind of we <coughs> adapt the, so add the gate to the ansatz, and but kind of, point of this is like we know the uh, exact wave function from the previous QSCI uh, by classical diagonalization. So kind of in, uh, in this, uh, when you add gate, you can just classically uh, tune a uh, node of the best parameter that reduce the energy of these ansatz. So kind of you don't need uh, like kind of VQE type optimization, you just need classical optimization. Kind of for the each step, um, you can uh, just know the best parameter classically. So kind of uh, with that, uh, we believe kind of uh, we can skip a lot of uh, problems of the VQEs. Yeah. So I will uh, skip this result. So kind of if you are interested in uh, see our papers in details. So kind of uh, uh, the, just uh, from our 
uh, last message from him. So kind of uh, what we believe is there's uh, kind of this from 2018 or 2017. So there's a large interest in NISC and kind of we still believe that this NISC we can do something uh, that even though it's not groundbreaking, but some usefulness in like the understanding of the molecules. So kind of we are still uh, focusing on this uh, NISC algorithms. And for that kind of I would like to to like the encourage uh, more researchers to work on this. So kind of towards that, we uh, did the uh, quantum algorithms grand challenges in 2023. And kind of in that we defined problems based on NISC and focusing on um, energy calculation of the Hamiltonian and kind of we, we build evaluation simulator, example code, etc., and kind of run three months contest and kind of uh, we awarded winner in actual quantum week. So kind of this year we will con continue doing that. So kind of we will uh, plan to announce these next challenges in February. So kind of if you are working on these NISC algorithms in the chemistry field, yeah, uh, kind of I strongly encourage you to submit uh, your algorithms and kind of compete uh, with the world. Okay, that's all from me, thank you. And now I will uh, hand over to the Ogoisam, our partners. Uh, okay, so oh, it's not my <laughs> slide. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I'm I'm waiting for my slide. <coughs> Uh, this is mine. Okay, uh, thank you so much. My name is Takahiro Ogoe from Panasonic Foldings. Uh, it's an honor to be able to, to uh, talk to you today. Uh, in my presentation, uh, I will mainly talk about our recent applications. So uh, let me first introduce myself. I'm a, a chief researcher in technology division of Panasonic Foldings, and I specialize in, in computational materials science. I have a research background in both academia and uh, industry. Uh, throughout my research my uh, life, uh, I've been uh, seeking accurate uh, prediction methods for uh, materials, and now it is uh, quantum computing. Uh, about Panasonic Group, we provide a variety of uh, products and services, such as uh, home appliances and batteries and so on. Uh, throughout our activities, we aim to uh, help you uh, live your best life, which is actually our brand slogan. Uh, this includes the contribution to uh, uh, creating the sustainable uh, society. For, uh, for instance, we have uh, uh, concrete goals to introduce C uh, sorry, in, uh, reduce uh, CO2 emission, which we call uh, Panasonic Green Impact. Here, uh, by 2050, we aim to reduce uh, CO2 emission by 300 million tons from our value chain. This amount is about 1% of the current total uh, global emission. This means that uh, we take a large responsibility. About our quantum computing activities, uh, in order to prepare for a breakthrough in quantum computing, uh, we are promoting education as well as uh, research uh, in, the, in our technology division. Uh, in research activity, we are working on uh, quantum chemistry and uh, quantum optimization and uh, quantum AI. Some of the results are already open. In quantum chemistry, we are collaborating with uh, QNASIS. <laughs> For uh, education, uh, we've studied our own um, learning courses to uh, develop quantum human resources. Uh, complementary, uh, we are uh, taking the external lectures uh, provided by uh, consortiums uh, such as uh, QPAC. 
here uh, I'll explain an application roadmap which I'm thinking about. Uh, look at this mountain. Uh, my goal is uh, uh, industrial applications by using uh, fault tolerant quantum computers. So, uh, what is the current status? In the uh, very early stages, we started uh, with uh, simulators. Uh, the largest, uh, the target problems were uh, toy or basic ones, which are not necessarily useful. Uh, so, uh, how, how can we climb this mountain? There are, several, there are several ways, but uh, first we uh, want to uh, use actual, actual quantum computers instead of simulators. Uh, there are hurdles in this step because we have to treat real device noises. Second, we uh, want to uh, tackle practical uh, problems which are useful uh, in terms of the uh, industrial applications. Actually, we uh, did it and uh, in our uh, recent work, and I'll show it uh, later. In any case, this is uh, uh, our uh, current status in the long, this long journey. If we go uh, further, uh, we'll scale up the uh, target problem by using uh, more qubits, uh, but uh, the quantum circuits become more uh, noise, uh, noisier, and we'll use the uh, error corrections at some point. This is about our recent application, which was done in collaboration with uh, QNASIS. In this work, we have demonstrated uh, computations of the uh, so-called band structure of the silicon crystal using actual quantum computers. So uh, why band structure? I have two reasons. So uh, uh, first, it's because of its uh, industrial importance. They determine the electronic conductivity. In particular, the band gap uh, determines whether materials become uh, metals, insulators, or semiconductors. Second uh, reason is that there are some difficulties in the existing numerical methods. More precisely, the uh, accurate predictions are very difficult for materials with uh, uh, strong electron correlations. Hopefully, the compute, uh, quantum computing will overcome it in the uh, future. For this reason, we believe that the uh, band structure calculation is a promising application of quantum computers. So here is our uh, main result. Uh, in this figure, uh, we got blue points by using actual quantum computers. The lines are exact result we got by a classical method and classical computers. Uh, these agreements show uh, the success of our uh, demonstration. This calculation is essentially the uh, excited state calculation, and uh, it also requires ground state calculation as well. So uh, for uh, algorithms, uh, we use the VQE algorithms as well as uh, so-called QSE algorithms. Uh, for quantum computers, we used the uh, Ligeti's professors, Aspen M2 and uh, M3. He practically, we submitted the jobs uh, by using Amazon Bracket API. The uh, key technology here is uh, 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 qubit reductions and uh, error mitigations. So, uh, which uh, I will explain in more detail. About uh, qubit reductions, to uh, make the application feasible, uh, we reduce the number of uh, qubits largely. So, how? The band structure uh, consists of uh, two kinds of uh, bands, namely a conduction band and a balance band. And the band gap determines electronic uh, conductivity. Uh, which means that we have two uh, most important bands, uh, namely the lowest uh, conduction band and the uh, highest uh, balance band. So we uh, focused on these two bands, which uh, reduced the number of uh, qubits from 16 to uh, 4. Moreover, uh, we use the symmetry-based uh, qubit mapping techniques, which eventually uh, reduced uh, to uh, two qubit problems. Uh, this uh, quantum uh, circuit shows that the one 
we actually used. Even for、uh, two qubit、uh, systems, error mitigations are really necessary. As a、uh, mitigation method, we basically use the、uh, error,、uh, read out error mitigation.、Uh, this mitigates errors in the measurement process. However, it's,、uh, it was not enough.、Uh, to show it, we here plotted a histogram of、uh, independent calculation results. Uh, you see that some of the、uh, results are far from、uh, the ideal noise free value which we got by、uh, simulators separately. However, after,、uh, we found that、uh, after taking the average of outcomes, we could well、uh, reproduce the ideal values,、uh, meaning that we could cancel out the remaining errors. To、uh, summarize, we have、uh, demonstrated calculation, computations of the、uh, band structure of the silicon crystal using、uh, actual quantum computers. As a、uh, prospect, scaling up the problem,、uh, with the, uh, problem size will be one of the next steps.、Uh, however,、uh, eliminating errors are、uh, very difficult even for、uh, two qubit、uh, systems, so、uh, we might need more advanced algorithms.、Uh, Uh, such as、uh, QSCI in the next step. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>